Welcome back to Adulthood Friends. This is the discussion-based podcast where two former childhood acquaintances, now friends, discuss the things that adverb Josh? Sleepily. That sleepily matter. Sleepily. That's your adverb of the week because I am so sleepy. <laughs> well, wake up. Okay. You've got to be woke for this one. Oh, shit. Oh, I, uh... ugh, I, I hate my own joke. I hate <laughs> So we've got episode 41 today, and we're going to be talking about cancel culture. So does it exist? Is it warranted? Or are we all just a bunch of corn flakes? Corn flakes. <laughs> Who's tired now? I'm guessing you meant snowflakes. I did. But you know, I like corn flakes. Are we all just a bunch of snowflakes? Are we being too sensitive about things? <laughs> uh, <laughs> not crunchy and corn flaky deliciousness. Okay, should we just get into it? <laughs> Let's get into it, Aya. <laughs> Cornflakes. And we're back. Oh, so good to be back. Uh-huh. I know you just want to cancel me every time I say that. Okay. Yeah, I don't <laughs> if I wanted to cancel you, I could just say, Josh, no more podcast. And one thing would be canceled. Is that something you worry about being canceled, Josh? Wow, just jumping right into that, huh? Just jumping right Yeah, into all the it. time, Aya, but first, how are you? <laughs> I'm fine. What's going on? Oh, right, right. I forgot we still do this. Uh, I'm <laughs> good. How are you? I'm fine. <laughs> well, as I mentioned, uh, I am very tired. I was up. Yeah. I don't know. I've been trying to fix my sleep cycle, but... <laughs> really? Because because I get, I get calls from you at the most ridiculous time. I'm like, this is a ridiculous time for me. Or not ridiculous, but it'll be like, oh, I'm up at 7.30 because I have to... And I'm getting a call from Josh. And I'm like, it's what, 4.30 for you? What are you doing? It was 4.30 in the morning when I got up because, well, I got up to continue editing the previous episode, Aww. which as of this recording still hasn't been released. But. <laughs> it's not burdening our listeners with that. Uh, uh, happy Valentine's Day, by the way. It's not going to be Valentine's Day when this comes out. It doesn't matter. We're recording it on Valentine's Day. That's what matters. <gasps> okay. <laughs> I don't care about the, you know what I told my girlfriend today? What's that? I told her I hate Valentine's Day, but I love you. What? Oh, that's <laughs> weird, but nice, I guess. Are you doing anything for her at least? Yeah, I'm cooking some dinner and, you know. Ooh, what are you cooking? You can tell us because she won't hear this until after you've already cooked it. Well, here's the problem. If I tell you I can't change it up now, it's going to have to be, I'll, I'll have lied. No. You'll... So I'd like to, I want to, it's like jazz a little bit. I still want to figure out if I'm going to do something a little. Okay, just tell us what your current plan is. I'm Jeez, current plan wait, is to. <laughs> you're overthinking this. Okay, yeah, pasta, salad, maybe some garlic mushrooms and cauliflower. We'll see. That's what you were afraid to tell us. Pasta and salad. I mean, I'm not telling you specifics. <laughs> what if I what if I wanted to change it up? Get like <laughs> salad and pasta. I don't know. I have a lot of ingredients. That's what I'm thinking about right now. Mm-hmm. But like a certain okay. type of those things. Anyway, oh. yes, I'm very tired. I was up. Actually, I went to bed really early and I woke up really early. That was me trying to fix things. And I'm not getting a full night's sleep. Well, good so. job. I'm proud of you trying. You it's important that you do. You're going to get some big bags under your eyes I later in life. already do, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, well. Yeah. Okay. What about you? I said I'm fine. That's, n- God damn it, Aya. How many questions <laughs> do I get? Let's get down to business. No, Aya, uh, what is going on in your life? Nothing much. I had class all day today, so I taught in the morning, and then I had a French class. It's a three-hour class, and it actually went overtime, which is like, because there were presentations that had to kind of be finished, so... It was like a almost, well, not a four hour class. I'm exaggerating, but it was over three hours of just sitting there and like listening to people and talking and stuff. So you are done with listening and listening and talking. talking. (laughs) You couldn't pay me to do any more of that today. No. And in the meantime, I'm getting calls from Josh. I think you called me like three times while I was teaching. I was like, God damn it, Josh. No, it's okay. You you don't know. Why Uh, would you know my schedule? We had to plan for this. To be fair, you tried calling me yesterday and this morning and I was like, I'll talk to him when I have time. And then you're like, hey, do you have a minute? Uh, (laughs) No, I'm teaching. Okay. I was trying to get your input. And on... My students were like, who's Josh Littman? No, I, they can't see my phone. What are you talking about? I'm not famous in London already. I think you are famous in certain parts of London, but not with undergrad <laughs> students. They don't know you. They don't know you. They don't uh... care. They don't know I have a podcast because that would be ridiculous. Actually. So they'd be like, I, I heard what you said on the podcast. No, <laughs> I don't know what they'd say. Maybe they're all listening. They're just not telling you. They're not. They don't know. They're all like, Dr. Isha has a podcast, everybody. Let's meet on our lunch break and listen to it. No, nobody knows. They all know. They, knows. they don't know. 
Yeah. Okay. You want to hear something I did recently this past week that actually relates? Yes. Tell me about something that you did that relates. It might be one of the triggers. Through lines. Through oh, lines. <laughs> oh. Eh? Eh? A trigger. Uh, oh, it? good one. I don't think you're going to be able to top your woke. Outdo my terrible one. woke joke. Probably not. <laughs> but try. It was great, actually. Try. Don't, don't. Oh, you know. it's, it's kind of a pun, though. I don't really like puns, as we know. Oh, that's your problem. Everybody else does. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Tell me about your events trigger. Okay. That, uh, yeah. It kind of, well, I was going to say it kind of triggered this idea for this episode of the podcast. Mm, it did. So, yeah, I went and saw a play, which I haven't done in a long time. And even then, the last time I saw plays, it was either musicals or Shakespeare. This was like a real honest to goodness contemporary theatrical production. Mm. You know, a good story, writing. I don't know how to... I wish our <laughs> listeners could see your hands right now. I, I'll just explain it. So Josh is gesticulating very dramatically with his hands that kind of got like a movement and then a freeze, like a like as if he himself is in a play right now trying to <laughs> show us how excited he is about this play that he saw. You know, you got to perform for the person in the back in the last row. That's how it is. That's right. Stage. That's right. I like that yep. you said gesticulating. I know it's a normal word, but it sounds dirty. Is it? Oh my God. Why? Yeah. Why does it? No, gesticulating. It's not even close to any other. Let's look into it. Why does that word sound dirty to you, Josh? No, there's nothing to look into. Anyway. Okay. We're never going to get through this episode. <laughs> okay. So I went and saw this play and it's called Power of Sail. S-A-I-L. Sail. Like in a sailboat. Like in a sailboat. Yes. Okay. So yeah, I saw this thing in, it's called the Geffen Playhouse. It's a really nice theater here in Los Angeles. And, you know, I went with my girlfriend. We got really great seats. We were like, screw it. Let's get good seats. Mm -hmm. We haven't done something like this in forever, if ever. And this play, what was interesting about it was that it starred Brian Cranston. The breaking Bad guy. Breaking Brad. Breaking Brad. <laughs> <laughs> no, poor Brad. Wow. <laughs> breaking Bad guy star Brian Cranston, Walter White, Heisenberg himself. Mm -hmm. Oh, you've seen Breaking Bad, right, Aya? I sure have. Yeah, it's a great great show right. it is i have why oh, are you okay. looking at me like okay, that just making sure you think i'm making something up no yeah, of course I've not seen it. no that's great that's great it's good what's happening right now what is this <laughs> judgment i don't understand i ha i've seen few shows but i have seen breaking bad no that's good that's good so you know how awesome <sighs> it is i do yes i just said how awesome that he was standing feet from me yeah that's i'm it's very exciting i already showed my excitement in a phone call earlier so you should have saved this <laughs> for now but it's okay come yes, on Aya. it was very exciting perform for us oh my god you saw wait brian cranston Fucking from Brian Cranston from Breaking, Breaking Bad from Malcolm Live? in the Middle. Or was it yeah, the dad and Malcolm in the Middle? <laughs> yeah, or was it like the man a, from Trumbo? Could you like <laughs> see his face? Like were you really you said you were close? I was so wow. close. That's incredible. I can't contain my enthusiasm. I was so close I could have given him COVID. Oh my god, that's such a weird <laughs> way to say how close you are to someone. <laughs> Jesus, Josh. We all were wearing masks. Yeah. Uh -huh. Except for well, he wasn't. I mean, yes, he was on stage acting in the play, but still. Yeah, you'd ask for like half price if he was wearing a mask. You'd be like, What? I paid for his whole face. I don't want to be seeing half. Are you looking at your phone? right now josh no i was turning oh, down my headphones oh wire. i'm like yelling at you sorry i think it's just because i'm tired and everything seems louder Aww. i'm delirious okay anyway this play was fantastic did you hear my half price joke though uh, yeah i heard it i just wasn't listening <laughs> continue fine <laughs> i'm sorry no it's okay uh, it's not for me to laugh at okay it's for whoever is listening to this if you don't laugh i assume you haven't heard it i i assume that i'm so funny that if you don't laugh you just didn't hear me <laughs> That's terrible. You are funny. The problem is that right, it's really funny when making fun of me. And then I'm always conflicted about whether I should laugh. I wasn't making fun of you. No, not this time. That's the irony. Yeah. Yeah. No, when I'm making fun of you, I don't expect you to laugh. <laughs> okay. I will anyway. So Brian Cranston Anyways. started in this play, Power of Sail, which apparently refers to if you're driving a larger boat like with a motor and there's another boat that doesn't have a motor. It's just like a sailboat. And you're expected to yield to the smaller motorless boat. Mm. And okay. that's known as power of sail. Right. Because their power just comes from their sails, not from their motor. Something like that. Yeah. So you have to just be like, okay, okay. I didn't know about that. Yeah. So I learned that from this play, actually. I know about starboard and port. <laughs> <laughs> that just gave you like an aneurysm <laughs> trying to remember that other word yeah so i won't get into how that factors into the play but what this play was about and again it was a great play if anybody gets a chance to see it i highly recommend it it's very of the time i feel like it's very resonant right now i don't know about you but i haven't seen 
throughout my life, I haven't seen a lot of plays that were modern that felt like they were made for mm. today. Mm. I always go and watch a play. It's either ancient history or a musical or something. So anyway, this play, I'll give you kind of the setup of it and you can get an idea what it was about. So Brian Cranston is playing this university professor and he has invited a white nationalist to come speak at the university so he can debate him. And he has protesters now, not the white nationalist, Brian Cranston's character has protesters outside his office. Mm -hmm. And he's getting calls for people. Basically, they're all like, what are you doing? Don't invite this Nazi to our campus. Mm -hmm. Like, what are you doing? Giving a platform to a Nazi. And his argument is, what are you talking about? Like, this is a university. This is where we debate, debate ide ideas. We debate yeah. ideas. Yeah. You know, if we want to show everybody that this guy is crazy, then we should expose him, bring him into the light. Mm -hmm. You shine a light on darkness is kind of the idea, right? You let everybody see him for the whack job that he is. And he can't wait to destroy him in front of everybody on stage. So that's the kind of setup for it. And all these other people are like, dude, it's not worth it. He's a Nazi. <laughs> Isn't there a line somewhere of when you don't right. give somebody a platform? That's one of the arguments and one of the things that's being one of the themes of this play. So anyways, I was thinking about that a lot mm. after the play as well about my thoughts on that, because I've always I've always wondered myself how far is too far yeah. in terms of, you know, it's, I'm not just talking about free speech or in Canada, it's known as freedom of expression. Of course, legally, you're allowed to say <laughs> all kinds of things. Although unless it's hate speech unless is it's, specific. Yeah, hate speech is something else that's very specific, but you are generally allowed to have all kinds of horrible beliefs and talk about it and legally be okay. Mm. Doesn't mean that certain private institutions won't, they have their own standards. So that's understandable. But a university, for example, where ideas are supposed to be debated, mm -hmm. where is the line there? So I was wondering what, you know, Maybe to start this thing off, I know that you asked me uh, if I'm afraid of being canceled. I'll uh, save that a little bit. Okay. I want to know what your thoughts are on this. You know, if yeah. Nazi or neo-Nazi or white nationalist, somebody was coming to speak at campus, would you be okay with that? I mean, you work at a university. Yeah, no, I think it's a good question. I don't necessarily have a, a great answer for it. I think ideally we should be able to have a platform for people whose ideas we definitely disagree with or who have what we could call dangerous ideas. I think ideally they could be given a platform and we can trust that the people who are hearing it are able to parse out what is, I don't want to say what's crazy, but what are the dangerous ideas? What's untrue? And what is, I'm not explaining this well. I think the people who are watching should ideally be able to apply their own critical thinking skills mm -hmm. to see what is a valid argument and what isn't. So that's a very ideal scenario. I think at a university, that's something that we should strive for. I think it doesn't happen very much in university anymore and people are used to having one set of ideas that is the norm and you aren't allowed to stray from that or to challenge that. And I think because it's a, an institution where you're supposed to be fostering critical thinking skills and all of that, I think it's dangerous to just have one single set of ideas that everyone has to follow. Right. So you're saying leave it up to the audience to decide, in a sense, the, the person who's there to hear the ideas, they should. I th yeah, I think use it as a teaching moment to say, it's up to you. You'll be given a lot of things in life that aren't things that you agree with. And you have to be able to formulate an opinion on why you agree with it or not. That's an important skill. That's essentially what you should be learning in university, among other things. So you are, yeah. you would side with like Brian Cranston's character I would. a little bit, yeah, right? I, I would. I mean, I, I don't know if in that case, that particular guy. Of course. There's specifics to the play. There's yeah. specifics that would, but I think it's important to engage with ideas that you don't agree with or ideas that seem problematic to you, because if you don't, then you'll never be able to one, actually see what's wrong with them or argue with someone like you're kind of just disconnecting yourself from it. So for example, like, I think I've mentioned this before, but I had a good friend who was really into Jordan Peterson mm. and we would get into these discussions and I was like, I was sometimes at a loss for how to argue because I didn't know, like you need to know the material to see what's actually wrong with it. So like I read Jordan Peterson's book because I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to figure out what it is that is wrong with his arguments. If there is something wrong, maybe there isn't. And maybe I'm just, all I'm hearing is what I'm like, I'm only hearing one side of the story and I should be open to ideas. I don't think we should be afraid of ideas mm. as long as we're able to engage with them. That said- But as long as we're able to engage with them, yeah. what is the real reason people are not wanting some of these people to come on campus sometimes, right? It's, isn't it because they- I guess you could define safe spaces and stuff, and that has a few different meanings. Right. But they feel triggered, basically, by certain things. Yeah. A white nationalist, to me, is a bit 
or white supremacist is really pushing it because is there actually something to learn from that or not? I don't know. I don't know if that's the case because you don't think there's anything to learn. I'm not sure. I don't know about that specific someone in today's day and age thinking like this. Well, there are a lot of people like that. I don't know about like it depends on the person. It depends on does this guy already have a following or are you just giving a platform to someone who already like those are important questions. Yeah, That's a good question right here. Do they already have a following? And I think this actually makes a bit of a difference. Yeah. If you just take the craziest person, it's like, why give them a platform if there's so many exactly. people to give a platform? Yeah. But if somebody actually has a following and they're, you know, when we talk about dangerous ideas, it's dangerous because it seems there's a lot of people or more than enough people following it. Yeah. That means we have to pay attention to it, in my opinion. Exactly. I agree with that. Whether or not we want to, because it's there. It's out there and it's getting, those ideas are getting other people involved with them. Like yeah. if we want to be able to combat that. We have to hear about it. We have to listen and yeah, we, whether or not we give them a platform, they already have a platform somewhere. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It's important to be able to see what they're saying that is resonating with people because yeah. if they already have an audience, it means that there's a bunch of people who agree with this guy. So you're not just learning about what he thinks and why he thinks it. You're learning about why all these people think that and why. Yeah. So we're in agreement that you don't just want to invite any Nazi up there. You want to yeah. invite the Naziest of Nazis. Specific Nazis. Yeah. Nazis all already have a good a, a follow. <laughs> you want to invite the top brass of Nazis, right? You want to you want to get the I mean, because I don't want to argue with a dumb Nazi. No, you want a smart Nazi. Yeah. yeah want, if they exist. Yeah. Well, the ones with the most cogent arguments, I guess, if you can say <laughs> that. I've never used the word cogent in my life. I don't know where that came from. Cog- I'm I'm proud. It's just like gesticulating. I was just thinking gesticulating. It's, yeah. Wow. Oh my God. That's so wrong. <laughs> I just think it's kind of a balance, right? Like, because of what you said, if it's just some person who didn't have a following before and you're bringing them on one, what's the real point? Because you might just be setting up a person who has very obviously terrible arguments and you're just like, here, look at this guy. Look at what an idiot he is. Yeah. Whereas if you take someone who already has a following one, you're actually engaging with the other side because then there's going to be all these people who are like, oh, at least they, they gave him a platform at the university. Otherwise they're going to say, no, the university, oh, it's a bunch of left wing, blah, blah, blah. Bunch they of don't, liberal they, elite. Yeah, they won't even listen to another argument. And sometimes that's true. They should be able to. I mean, white against white supremacists is kind of an extreme yeah, but version wait. of it. I think there's a lot of other ones. On the other hand, though, I, uh, there are people who would say if you give them this platform, then that's a win for that side. Now we're legitimizing these crazy beliefs. Right. If you allow someone to operate in a normal mm. sphere, then we're basically yeah. saying it, it's like normalization. We're allowing you. We're, we're saying it's just another idea. Mm. The question is, are there ideas that aren't just another idea that are uh, that's not, of course, we think that. But are there ideas that are so extreme to us that we fear that it's going to be poisonous in some way mm. to uh, society just to platform them? Yeah, I think so. That's the other thing. Like I said, this was a very idealized like oh, we can listen to everything and everyone will just apply their critical thinking and it'll be okay and then we'll all understand each other. That's kind of an extreme because what is more likely to happen, yeah, is that that side might take that side. They might take it as a win. Look, this guy, he's spoken at Harvard. Nobody cares why. Nobody cares that he was there as a person who was, you know, a counterpoint. He was a distinguished guest at Harvard. Yeah, exactly. That said, like, you're not... (laughs) If that's the way that people are playing, you're not really going to win against them. But I think it also kind of ties into when giving a platform to people matters outside of a place like academia, because at least in academia, you're saying, okay, it's supposed to be a place of ideas they can be debated. But when you're, for example, if we were just bringing someone on our podcast, I think that's well, our podcast doesn't count because we're we'll, we'll, like DA listeners. <laughs> but for example, in the news, I'm sure you've heard about the Joe Rogan podcast. Well, yeah, you're talking about podcasts right now and our podcast. Well, there's a much bigger, more famous. Just a little bigger, I think. He has maybe a few more listeners than it's us. It's like yeah. the biggest podcast in the world. So for people who don't know, and most people seem to at this point, Spotify actually, in order to get like exclusive rights to Joe Rogan's, mm. basically to for them to be the, what do you call it? They publish it? Um, I don't know. The, yeah, they have exclusive rights to platform no platform, <laughs> just in my head to um stream it like he's not yeah, anywhere stream, else yeah so joe rogan's now his stuff's up on spotify and they paid him a hundred million dollars mm-hmm. to do this so they invested a lot in joe rogan yeah now recently or more recently he's been in the news because because why Aya? oh because of his anti-vax views he's given a platform to some is that what you're gonna say yeah. Well, you describe it the way you'll describe it. Well, he he also gave a platform to um that doctor, I forget now, but one of the main like conspiracy theory guys 
Is he a conspiracy theory guy? Because one of them was a guy who was heavily involved in the mRNA vaccine research. Mm, but he's like, play, like, oh, it's not like they're very much anti-vax outliers in the medical field. Like I, they act like they have some kind of, well, I shouldn't say, okay. I didn't listen to this episode yet. So. I mean, to be fair, this guy actually did have some cred. That was what was scary about it, right? Right. So here's what's weird. There isn't just one thing, right? I think when it comes to Joe Rogan and this is just kind of my perspective outside of that. Hmm. I've listened to some Joe Rogan. I haven't listened to a lot of Joe Rogan. Me neither. I've listened to things here and there. Usually I've listened to clips. I've rarely listened to like a whole episode. I don't know how much you've listened to. Uh, years ago, but that was also pre like his descent into anti vax <laughs> So here's the thing, Joe Rogan, I and mean, what is he? He was like originally like a UFC guy. Yeah. Oh, I also watched some of his comedy. I hated his comedy. I don't know why I found him really annoying. He's a comedian and he's also He was the Fear Factor. He was guy. the Fear Factor guy. <laughs> I, remember, I remember that. Yeah. So Joe yeah. Rogan's been around a long time and his podcast has also been around like a long time and his words like he started this thing just like to sh- shoot the shit with his just friends. having conversations man yeah just having conversations man and honestly that is exactly what it comes off as this is a podcast where he just brings on people and has conversations with them and i think it's become so popular because he's really good at that mm. he seems to be a good listener he asks really good questions doesn't usually seem to come on with some sort of agenda it's just he just seems like a regular guy who wants to learn more. And that's mm-hmm. very appealing to a lot of people. <laughs> it's it's like fun to listen to his podcast sometimes because from what I've listened to, it'll have like a belief about something. It'll get challenged by a guest that he brings on. He often brings on guests to challenge him. Mm-hmm. And then he'll ask his assistant or, you know, the guy running the thing, like, can you look this statistic up for me, please? And they look it up and you'll be like, oh, I'm okay, I was wrong. My bad. It feels like two people actually hanging out debating something and then looking it up like we might on the right on the computer and then be like oh my bad and then they're usually all really cool with each other by the time it's done they agree disagree have a good conversation about literally anything and move on so people like that i think it's one of the reasons he's gotten so popular i think that recently what has drawn some negative attention towards him is he has been on off hesitant about the vaccine this vaccine And I don't know about you, I get like kind of triggered when I hear someone's, (laughs) even though I know people, I have friends who are hesitant about the vaccine. Was he on off hesitant? I feel like he was just, he was pretty anti-vax for a while. Like he had COVID and he took like ivermectin and some other. I mean, his doctor prescribed ivermectin. I'm going to find myself like Trevor Uh Noah. I don't know if you heard Trevor Noah recently talk about Joe Rogan and this, these issues recently. He's like, I'm going to sound like I'm defending Joe Rogan right now. <laughs> and that's because we're kind of defending Joe Rogan right now. Interesting. Okay. It's because I, the media is painting him to be something he isn't exactly. He's kind of a complex person. I, I uh, Like he's as complex as anyone. I don't, I wouldn't say he's, a, oh, he's so complex. I mean. I don't mean he's like a, an academic. I meant he's, he's not he's, particularly intelligent or like he's okay. I can understand that he's I don't, smart. I don't agree. I think he's actually pretty intelligent, but it depends. It depends what you value. He's a truth seeker. Like he is constantly learning. I do agree that he does seem to genuinely be curious about things and that maybe yeah. that's the best. Maybe that is a kind of intelligence. Okay, fine. Yeah, that curiosity is very, that's actually a good word because that curiosity, I think is one of the things that people are really, that's what they like. Hmm. You know how some people get excited about other people's excitement? Yeah. Well, I think with him, they get curious, you know, alongside his curiosity. Okay. So he's really good at being curious. Well, that's good. I mean, if that's what he's doing. Yeah. Yeah. So the vaccine stuff, I don't agree with where his mind, what rabbit hole he started going down. I don't think he's as extreme as some other, but when I see on and off hesitant, he isn't like anti-vaccine exactly. He seems to be more like pro, like the choice of whether or not you take it and whether, you know, if you're a certain ages, should you take it or not? He's like, if you think it's for you, please go ahead, take the vaccine, yada, yada. It's not very strong uh, of an endorsement there, but it's not like he's like, this is going to kill you. Okay. Again, I don't want to go into his specifics of all his vaccine views. He brings people on who disagree with him. Uh And then he acknowledges that too. More recently though, people caught on to some of the string of people he brought on that. What about like Alex Jones or... Because he's brought, he is like a conspiracy theory guy sometimes. I'm sorry, you were in the middle of it. Well, Alex Jones is a freaking conspiracy theory. I mean, that guy's freaking insane. Alex Jones is, yeah. That guy is. He's a horrible person. Yeah, yeah. that guy, I get angry thinking about him. But Joe Rogan, I think his biggest issue, and he apologized for this recently, and he gave a really good apology, I think, if you listen to his apology. I agree with that. He did. He basically said, like, I don't think I did a good enough job of bringing on 
like opposing views like opposing views in this regard and that's Mm -hmm. that's kind of what he's supposed to be known for right he brings on people who disagree and agree but because it seems when i said at the beginning he doesn't seem to have an agenda in many ways well in this case it started to seem like he did right I kind of am a little hesitant about the vaccine. Let's bring on some doctors that agree with me. Mm. He did that a couple times or a few times. I mean, he also brought on Sanjay Gupta and (laughs) who schooled him on a bunch of stuff too. So this is like one aspect of it. I think the vaccine stuff started like steamrolling for him, but he's also not, okay, how many people do you know that think he's this like crazy right-wing bro dude? I don't. I don't think that, I mean, I remember when he had Bernie Sanders on, that was part of my introduction to him. As yeah, a podcast, same, or actually. like back when he was on YouTube was like, oh, look, he's got Bernie Sanders. He talks about this stuff. I don't remember disagreeing with. He him. didn't just have Bernie Sanders on. He said, I'm going to vote for Bernie. Yeah, Sanders. And he was like, I'm, I'm going to vote for it. Yeah. Yeah. He I said, remember. I'm all about universal health care. I'm all about, you know, he, he has a lot of views that I really like and agree with too. Yeah. He's like, I, I'll pay more in taxes if it means everybody getting health care. That I didn't know. I didn't remember that. Although it makes sense if he's voting for Bernie, then yeah. Yeah. I mean, he he has some, you know, he, he definitely has a healthy or maybe unhealthy sometimes distrust of certain institutions or organizations or government. Mm-hmm. You know, he was like, I'm voting for Bernie or Tulsi. That's it. <laughs> Who? Oh, I don't even remember that. Yeah. Tulsi Gabbard. Mm-hmm. Those were his two options, right? Was like a libertarian dude? He's a little libertarian, yeah. So that's the thing. I So when people have described, or when I've talked to people about him, it's more that he's described as libertarian, which is different than right-wing, although libertarian is generally right-wing, but actually he's not really libertarian. If he's pro- like universal health care and actually yep. universal basic income as well. Yep. That's not, that's yep. completely the opposite of libertarianism, essentially. Which is what I mean by when I said he's kind of complex yeah. in that regard. He's got a gajillion podcast episodes out there talking about a gajillion things. Mm. He also has conflicting views. He'll say one thing one episode and then contradict himself in another episode because he either changed his mind or forgot he thought that, like a regular person does. Yeah, I think calling him complex is generous, let's say. <laughs> okay. It's a generous way of complex meaning he's got a bunch of conflicting different views on different things he's not easy you can't pigeonhole him really easily and people are trying to pigeonhole him as right something right now and they're bringing up another thing recently is that you know in the past he said some really racially insensitive things he used to just say the n-word mm. when talking about people who said the n-word mm-hmm. i mean in that case context doesn't fix it though but he apologized for that as well i mean not that that necessarily makes it all better but he recognizes context doesn't fix it it's not his word to use right okay if you ask me was it good that he used that word no of course not did he apologize well for it. I mean, I think he did, but that's just my opinion. If you don't think it matters or you think yeah. that it's unforgivable, fine. That's your prerogative to think that. You know, he said some stuff that was, he made racially insensitive jokes. I mean, he fashions himself a comedian. He likes to say shock humor. He's not too funny. Is he funny? Like, uh... it depends. It's everyone's got different tastes. I, people who like him probably find him pretty funny. I remember one of my first like introductions to him was watching some of his comedy and I was like, I hate this guy. I, <laughs> so I've probably let that taint the rest of what I saw of him is it or was it the anti-vax stuff you heard that really made you go fuck this no 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 i disliked him a while ago like i disliked him back in I disliked him before everyone else disliked him. Okay. I was like the first to hate Joe Rogan. I disliked him before it was cool to dislike him. Yeah. yeah, (laughs) I was like one of the first dislikers. No, no. Again. So same friend who likes Jordan Peterson was like, oh, like, look at this Joe Rogan thing. And I was like, I don't know why, but I hate this guy. Like occasionally I'll just, I'll be watching something and I'll be like, I inexplicably hate whatever is going on here. Like, I don't know why I hate him. (laughs) So I think it was just the way he was, I don't know, something about the way he talks about women. I, I'm not saying he's anything like I just I he definitely says things I found him annoying upsetting, that's totally fair irritating, irritating is the right word yeah. that is absolutely fair mm-hmm. to think that about him because yeah he has a way of being that could just rub people the wrong he's way such a bro- he is a bro he like, does he talk does have a, a certain oh, way man. so like some people find that relatable and everyday guyish. other people think he's a little bit what's the opposite of intellectual a dum-dum <laughs> like no. but that's the thing he he acts I think, again, what's appealing is that he talks like that, yeah. but he engages on the most pressing issues. He actually talks about things that matter. I mean, we fashion ourselves as two people who like to talk about things that matter on this podcast, right? That's true. Like, if there's anything we can give to him is that 
He's not up there just... That's true. I mean, yeah, he'll talk about... I'm sure he'll talk about what's in the entertainment news or whatever, too. But he really does like bringing on people like Bernie Sanders and talking about what it means to be a democratic socialist. Or I think that's great. I admire that. Bringing on Jordan Peterson or bringing on Ben Shapiro, whether or not you agree with these people. Yeah. Doctors and people who are top of their field, they come on and talk to him. And because he has this massive audience, I mean, didn't didn't they say he has like a bigger audience than CNN or something? Mm -mm. Like, because he has such a big audience, he is able to actually get a lot of this information out to everybody, which is really cool. But this is where the argument comes in that therefore he has more of a responsibility because he has such an audience, right? It's different. If you or I just say some random stupid shit, right? Fine. Which we will and which we do. We will and we do. But if we're the president of the United States and you say that, it has an impact on all your followers or people who believe in you. And Joe Rogan has followers. He has people who hang on his every word, which is, in my opinion, not a good idea because he doesn't hang on his every word. Like he he doesn't pay attention to how he says things a lot of the time. Probably driving him crazy. He's like, I'm just like talking to people. So, yeah. But again, in his apology, I think he recognized this type of thing. Like he's like, look, I just, I uh, this thing just kind of blew up. People are listening to me. I understand now. I guess I have this responsibility. He's like, but guys, don't listen to me. I'm a piece of shit. I'm dumb. Like, don't. So yeah, at least he knows. I I like people so much better when they admit that they're dumb. (laughs) Well, that also is telling me he's not dumb. He's just no, he's not dumb. No, no, I, I take it back. He's not. But he is, okay, so yeah, you're right. That was a good, like he made a good apology and those are good points. I think the thing about him, and it's it's actually not his fault, but, and again, this is not an easy thing to deal with because I would like to say, again, just like with the university, we should be able to listen to anything Mm. and be able to apply our own critical thinking skills to it and figure out what's true and what isn't. The thing is, when you're talking about so many, or sorry, I shouldn't say what's true and what isn't. Well, it does depend on what it is, right? In his case, the thing that really got him was the vaccine information stuff. A lot of people are saying there's a responsibility not to put out misinformation there because it could- Because it's dangerous. I mean, end lives. Yeah, it's dangerous in a different, it's dangerous because it means that people don't get the right information right. about you know health and pu- health policy. That could be very, very dangerous for all of us. Yeah, I mean, basically there's the question of people being able to parse through ideas and know what's a valid argument and what isn't doesn't always apply if you're getting someone so someone like joe rogan who has people on about everything like you're saying the listeners aren't and can't be experts in all of the things that we're hearing about no like nobody can i nobody has enough time in the day to be an epidemiologist uh philosopher and all of those things i mean very few people are capable of having actually like i know do your own research is like a term now but (laughs) to actually do your own research like people dedicate their lives to this stuff you can't yeah. you can't expect people to the problem is people don't know what doing your own research means yeah, like I know. they think listening to joe rogan is doing their own research right so what i'm saying is, and it's a little bit like yeah. depending on who comes on to talk it partly is but i think that right so the thing is that as a society we're supposed to or not supposed to but we've kind of agreed okay we're gonna have certain people who know so much about these things that they'll be considered the experts and they're gonna share their knowledge with the rest of us so that we don't have to go to a lab and do our own research for every little thing we have people that we're gonna trust we're gonna trust that those people are doing a good job that's why there's a whole peer review situation <laughs> peer review what's that called peer reviews process that's the word scientific method all that the scientific method there's a peer review review process before things are published. That's why that system is in place. It's supposed to make sure that only the ideas that have been proven get out. And then we have experts in those ideas that share them with us. So we can't expect everyone to be an expert in everything. So we have to trust some people. We have to trust some sources. Yeah. We have to be able to also critically analyze and understand experts. Like we have to understand them. Yes, but how you have to be able to trust that they're giving you the right information. Yes, that's true. But we also have to understand how they get their information and what makes them an expert because a lot of people think someone's an expert when they're not right or they listen to an expert if someone is an expert in one thing Mm. but it doesn't make them an expert in all things right yeah so sometimes you get like a someone in oh he's a doctor in something and then he's talking about vaccines i don't care if you're just because like you have a doctorate in literature doesn't mean that you're qualified (laughs) to talk about mrna vaccines like no he was wearing a white
white lab coat, okay? Like, oh my God. So because people are thinking, oh, I have to figure out everything for myself, and that's really not something that can be done in every case, then they think like, oh, I'm just going to make my decision based on what I think. I'm doing my own research. And it's a noble effort, but you can't. You have to be able to trust someone at some point. Yeah. I've had these arguments with people, for example, about the vaccines and stuff. I see arguments, debates, whatever you want to call it. It's this kind of thinking of either this whole thing is wrong or this whole thing is right, you know, Mm -hmm. instead of parsing it down and looking at the nuance, right? And they'll say, okay, Josh, so do you trust the government? Because they're the ones, you know, doing it. Do you trust Pfizer and Moderna as companies? Mm -hmm. Do you think they're not greedy? They're not corporate shills? Corporate shills. They don't have this like insane corporate greed and they're price gouging people. And no, all of that's true. Of course. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, of course they are. But it doesn't mean the medicine doesn't work. Mm-hmm. In fact, it's because the medicine works. That's the whole point. They made sure the medicine works because they're exploiting that yeah. for profit, of course. That's the bigger it. That's that's an issue to me, right? Yeah. You have to understand what is the issue. Just because they're bad guys in some ways, does that mean the stuff that they're selling you doesn't do its job right. or isn't safe or something? No, there's a bunch of really good hearted, smart doctors and scientists out there developing this stuff for the these greedy companies because they're the only ones with money funding it. Mm. People have to understand how this stuff comes about and who's an expert in what to make these decisions. Yeah, and for sure. And the case with Joe Rogan, like what you were saying when he brought on that doctor. So let's say mm. someone only listens to Joe Rogan and Joe Rogan is their source. Yes. And often- And there are people like that. Yeah, there are lots. And often he might be a good source for like what this guy thinks. But because if that's the only thing they're getting, then they're like, I heard an expert. That's exactly what we're supposed to be following. But if that's the only thing you're hearing and you don't trust the other media anyways, even though technically Joe Rogan is mainstream, but that's fine. <laughs> I think once you're the most listened to you are mainstream but that's fine he's not traditional media i understand that no he's just a guy he's got his own thought i mean yeah. that has its advantages and disadvantages right he doesn't have to answer to other well now he has to answer to spotify but <laughs> <laughs> although spotify right. yeah i mean spotify's like we invested in you we don't want you to be less popular um, he's probably getting more popular after this let's be honest they're taking off all of his all these we'll get to that in a second but okay. i looked into this guy that he brought on this was yeah one of the things that they went off and about they brought on a guy who was a legitimate i, I researched this guy He's a legitimate person in the field. And in fact, he's a kind of a top tier person in the field when it came to developing mRNA technology. I mean, I think on the podcast, they described him as the creator of the mRNA vaccine mm-hmm. stuff. I think that's not true. What's his name? Dr. Robert Malone. Robert Malone. Yeah. Yeah. He's a scientist who worked on early research into mRNA technology. Mm-hmm. You know, they were calling him the inventor or father of that stuff. That I think is highly debatable from what I've heard. Like, there's a lot of people who are involved with that stuff. And the truth is, they're not all coming out and saying this guy is. So the stuff that he was saying, by the way, he's also not saying he was putting doubt into people's minds about stuff, from what I understand. Mm. But even this doctor wasn't saying what a lot of people think he was saying. He's getting a platform on there because people think that that's mm. what he's saying. So he allows that kind of discussion to go. I mean, I think I heard clips of what he was saying, and it sounded pretty much like on the extreme of what anti-vaxxers say. Really? Yeah, but now I'm, I don't remember exactly what he said. There's things that anti-vaxxers are latching onto. I don't even know if this guy is just anti-vaccine in general. Yeah, oh, like he says stuff like mass formation psychosis, saying that everyone, that they're suppressing evidence supporting the efficacy of ivermectin as a COVID-19 treatment. And Well, that's also... T- like okay so (laughs) i'm gonna sound crazy here Uh but there's a difference between a treatment and a prevention yes yes of course and that's important to note but ivermectin has been okay so the ivermectin thing is another thing right in the media it's been kind of you know this is a horse dewormer people are taking horse medicine why are they taking it for COVID-19? Well, it has been used. Okay. It actually has been used. Um, there's a huge, like... But not at dose, not at the same doses and not... Yeah. Exactly. Not well, This is the nuance of it, right? Because there's a lot of idiots out there who don't understand the difference. And because <laughs> it's true. There's a lot of people who are like, well, ivermectin, I'll take that instead of the vaccine. Like, yeah. no, it's not the same thing. That's the thing. You're trusting people to be able to parse through yeah. arguments, which well, that's, they're, no offense, but not. That's kind of the problem here. Like, they're, I'm sure they're really good at what they do. Maybe thinking isn't one of those things. Yeah, but here's the problem, Maya, because it does seem sometimes like the media and certain places are assuming people are dumb and therefore they're not diving into the nuance Mm. of things like ivermectin and whether it's potentially helpful because it can by doing that it might accidentally contribute to the misinformation out there i don't because- know i listened to a cbbc podcast that talked about yes ivermectin does have some oh, things canada, and they had on a guest that was talking about <laughs> yeah in canada at least but cbc that's a governmental 
it's yeah. like it's funded by the government and they had on a guy that was talking about this and uh-huh. yeah ivermectin does have some potential treatment possibilities you'd be amazed that you what you're saying right now just saying that you'd be listed as like a no crazy- but just by saying that, even though what you said had nuance, like we're both like, no, it's not the yeah. vaccine. It doesn't do what a vaccine does. No, it's not the same as a vaccine. And it's not, and, okay. The treatment. Yeah, it's I see what a, you're saying. It's a potential yeah. treatment. So Joe Rogan, for example. And even that there's better treatment out now, but that's yeah. fine. Okay. Yeah. So okay. Joe Rogan, for example, there was a point at which the doctor prescribed ivermectin mm-hmm. as a treatment for him. And the media did kind of poorly in my opinion, they really poorly reported on that. Mm. Like he's taking like horse medication. No, he wasn't. He was taking what was prescribed by a doctor Mm. correctly. And that does sometimes feel like there is, like I've noticed now about every week, there's another story about Joe Rogan and something in his past. They're looking in to find something to make another story about because they know they're going to get those clicks now because everybody's on the cancel Joe Rogan train. Mm. These aren't new things. You know what I mean? They're now looking into his past to say when he said something dumb on a, one of his million podcasts. I'm not going to, de- I can't defend or wouldn't defend every bad thing that he said or that he was wrong about. Mm-hmm. That's not the point. The question I guess we're asking is, does any of that mean that he deserves to get canceled? Mm. Okay. One, I think it depends on what you mean by canceled. I don't think he, I'm not a fan of Joe Rogan, but I don't think he should get canceled. One, I think that would do the opposite of what people think it would do. I think he'll find a way to, to get his stuff out. People will listen. And added to that will be these liberal snowflakes or cornflakes, whatever you want to call it, (laughs) canceled. And I mean, again, not to say that Joe Rogan isn't liberal in in many ways i think he is but they canceled him and because they don't want these ideas out like it's not going to help the cop what we want is for everyone to have good information and for people to be getting i guess in the case of the COVID stuff at least getting a better view of what is actually going on in terms of the vaccines and everything i think the best case scenario is that joe rogan did what he did he kind of apologized he said i should have more people on with opposing opinions i think that's best case scenario because you don't want to cut off i and Mm-hmm. At first I was like, yeah, you go. Was it Neil Young? Yeah. Neil Young and all those. Yeah. Neil Young, Jody Mitchell. That were like. They're like, I'm pulling my music off of Spotify yeah. because. But I think that's. Ex- I mean, it was a good protest that brought attention. It was a protest and it got attention to it because really it, it did. And, and that was very important. And I appreciate that kind of thing. I don't think that the best move would have been. They personally canceled him. Yeah. <laughs> Spotify. Yeah, that's admirable. But Spotify decided not to. I don't know that that's a bad thing. They canceled the subscription to Spotify. Because, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, best case scenario is that Joe Rogan does keep this in mind or like looks at his own ideas, which from the sounds of it, he is capable of doing. You're already assuming that you're like, well, of course, he shouldn't. He should still have a platform. He's a guy with a podcast. He deserves to keep talking about stuff. I hope he brings on more different views and different guests. And, you know, he's just more aware in the future. That's, I mean, that's how I think. (laughs) And that's how, Mm -hmm. that's how I feel about it. There's a lot of people out there who don't feel that way. Yeah. So we both agree then he doesn't deserve to be canceled, right? No, I don't think so. I don't think he intentionally meant to do any, I think he was honestly just genuinely, these are the things he thinks, these are the people he had on. Mm -hmm. I don't agree with him and I don't like listening to him, but I, I don't think he's done anything bad enough to be canceled, Uh, especially considering that he had like a genuine apology. He seems like a very humble, like I can look at my own ideas kind of guy in those apologies. I don't think he should be canceled. I think, you know, he got. I mean, a lot of people look at him and they go, like, if you look at old videos of him and you see him today, his podcast has made him a smarter person. Mm, Well, good. Despite him, like, yeah, it's kind of like us. (laughs) Oh, me at least. I feel like a smarter person uh, after talking to you, Aya. I feel a little dumb. No, I just you feel dumber, terrible. but I, I feel also feel smarter. smarter. <laughs> no, Josh, you're so smart. But we're talking no. about important stuff all the time. Of course, it's it's making us research things. I feel like I've come out sometimes with a different idea than I had going in. Mm-hmm. Like sometimes I'll go into and be like, this is what I think. And this is what I'm going to tell Josh. And then we'll have a conversation about it. I'll be like, oh, anyway, I didn't look at it that way. And I think that's great. Yeah. And maybe that's what Joe Rogan does with his. So basically, we're just like a smaller version of Joe Rogan. And we <laughs> Oh, also God. Have that many listeners. We don't say the N word as much as he did on his podcast. I don't think I've ever said that word. No. <laughs> me neither. For me, my moral compass always points toward empathy. I don't know if you knew that. <laughs> uh, what does that mean? Oh, yeah. my God. Tell Just me. the idea that I don't have to change my views as much as often, as long as I stay on the empathy path, Mm. right? As long as you continue to empathize. It's one thing to be wrong about data or something or be wrong about something. Mm -hmm. 
But it's rarely wrong to try to understand somebody and their point of view and to not dismiss somebody right off the bat. That's a good way of Except Nazis. That. I tend to dismiss <laughs> people right off the bat, to be honest. It's a bad habit. Yeah. No, no, but it's there's reasons to do that too. I mean, we get triggered by certain things. And I mean, I've dismissed some people here and there. I think I dismissed Jordan Peterson a long time ago, way too fast. I have a lot of things I disagree with that guy about, but there's also a lot of things he says that are worth listening to or at least having a debate yeah. about. Although I saw a clip recently that was just like a mishmash of things that didn't make sense. I was like, nothing. This is just gibberish. But yeah, anyways, we don't need to talk about Jordan Peterson. <laughs> but yeah. No, we're talking about Joe Rogan. Now. <laughs> no, you, there are some things that he says that aren't incorrect, that aren't crazy or like, oh yeah, that's a good, I can see why people, it's important to know why people find that interesting or why he would be saying that. You know, all of that yeah. is important on the empathy path. What makes him so popular too, I think is that he has that sense of empathy and that he is searching for truth. He's talking to people, just trying to learn things, like we said. We're talking about Joe Rogan now, right? Yeah, Joe Rogan did, has been doing that. I mean, I don't know if I'm going to go listen to a bunch more of his stuff. I, I've liked a bunch of things I heard from him. I disagree. I, it's weird to say I disagree with him because he's the host. You know, he's there generally asking people questions. Mm. I mean, he has opinions. And what makes him kind of a good host usually is that his opinions just kind of shift or that he gets challenged by his guests. Mm -hmm. The problem is people sometimes listen to a podcast or watch a show and they attribute power to the host in a certain way. Like they attribute the most intelligence mm -hmm. because it's his show they're listening to. They're not listening to Sanjay Gupta's podcast. They're listening to mm -hmm. Joe Rogan's podcast. So I want to know what Joe Rogan thinks by the end of this podcast because he's the one who's going to, he's the one who's going to pull it all together with all these different points of view and come up with the right answer. Mm -hmm. Well, not necessarily. Sometimes the experts that he has on might be like, listen to that, you know, and find out when you think Joe Rogan is right or wrong and how he's interpreting the information that's, you know, it's just a matter of, like you said earlier in this episode, it's a matter of us using our critical thinking skills when listening and trying to determine who is an expert and in what. Hmm. Yeah. We're talking about being canceled and all this stuff, but we didn't even get to, does cancel culture exist? Oh, right, right. Good question. <laughs> I'm so glad you asked, Josh. As I tell all my students, that's such a great question, even when it's not. No, sometimes it, it, it usually is because I'm so excited that they asked the question that they're engaged with the material. I'm not lying to my students. <laughs> oh, yeah. Does cancel culture exist? I think <laughs> there are different terms to describe what's going on. And cancel culture, in quotations, it has mostly negative connotations. So if you say cancel culture, there are a lot of people who will disagree that that exists because people aren't being canceled. They're being held accountable. I do agree that people are being held accountable or another term for is call out culture. So you're saying it's semantics. I'm not saying- You're saying this is all a bunch of semantics. <laughs> I'm saying there's- there are different feelings that come along with each one. So some people will say, no, there's no such thing as cancel culture. It's more that people are finally being held accountable, held accountable for the things that they're doing. We're rectifying the power imbalances. Is that really what you think is happening? They're just getting called out and being held accountable. So I don't, I think that there is something to cancel culture. I don't think it's used. I don't agree with it to the extent that, because this is a, a term that's used quite a bit by generally people more on the right wing who are criticizing that, oh, this is cancel culture at it again. Like these people just got canceled because you said something four years ago about blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Um, but you don't think on the left they're using that term or terminology? Because I'm pretty sure I just read an article that asked if Joe Rogan should be canceled hmm. with kind of a slant of, yeah, he should, <laughs> you know? I get, Yeah, I guess it is still like we should cancel. Yeah. And like hashtag cancel, blah, 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 blah. That's true. It is being used. So to cancel someone, yes, that is being used. But I think the term cancel culture is used more to criticize the movement to cancel people more often. Well, you don't think so? I understand what you mean by that. And I see that in the sense that and I think that's why people on the left are occasionally saying, no, there's no such thing as cancel culture. Okay, so you're mm -hmm. so I see what you're saying. Wait, did you say the movement to cancel people? <laughs> Yeah. So you're saying what? there is a movement to cancel people. <laughs> yeah, I'm not saying that there's no cancel culture. So cancel culture is used to criticize the movement. Well, but Isn't that the whole saying, idea? But saying that it's cancel <laughs> culture is saying like, oh, it's this thing where we're, nobody's allowed to say anything and everybody's so politically correct and all these snowflakes can't handle so, anything. That's usually the uh, context that it's used in. I, I don't know about usually. I don't know if I agree with that. I think that's not fair. Okay, that's okay. Well, the reason I'm saying that is because, yes, we all know there's those right wing people. 
<laughs> it went through about five words in my head. Uh, Before you get into people? Oh. No, I'm talking about the type of, not just being right-wing, I'm talking about right mm-hmm. certain types of right-wing mm-hmm. people that are- The Sean Hannity's of the world. I don't know, the, everything's in terms of, you know, the snowflake liberal left and talking about needing their safe spaces and the cancel culture bullshit, right? Mm-hmm. I understand that. I understand those people who don't recognize when it's important to call out and hold people accountable Mm -hmm. when they do things that are not okay. And when we have systemic oppression going on, and it's important to speak of things in terms of systemic oppression and not distract from that. I understand that. But to argue that cancel culture doesn't exist is also, I think that's disingenuous. I'm not arguing it doesn't exist. Well, there are people who do. Like I'm looking at right now, because I was looking this up. I, I'm like, I'm sure I've seen this before, right? Yeah. And by the way, when I looked at cancel culture, I see what you're- Probably the Wikipedia definition. I don't you know. told me once you didn't, you don't Wikipedia, you're better than me, but you totally Wikipedia cancel culture. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I shouldn't have paused. What does this to say? Time yeah. to look it up. Cancel- I almost said it was- Wait, wait, let me read. Let's see how much of this. <laughs> it's in Wikipedia. It's- <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> Cancel. Yeah, but it's citing. This is what Wikipedia says. Let's see if I can. It's citing uh, the New York Times. Hold up, hold up. Anyway. Cancel culture or call out culture is a modern form of ostracism in which somebody is thrust out of social or professional circles. That's not what I said. Whether it be online, on social media, or in person. But you said. That's a definition from Merriam Webster. The expression cancel culture yeah. has mostly negative connotations and is used in debates of free speech and censorship. Is that what it says on? So I was quoting Wikipedia? Well, it's. Uh, yeah oh. <laughs> well whatever it might be from somewhere else I'm yeah sure it has mostly here. there you go so wikipedia backs me up <laughs> sure backs you up okay <laughs> well look at this but look at who it's citing so it's all very important i never i have nothing against wikipedia i probably just <laughs> wanted to make fun of you but i will say if you are looking at wikipedia the important thing is to look at who they yes. reference so it's like what we're talking about look at those experts who's an expert exactly so in that sentence the expression cancel culture has mostly negative connotations and is used in debates on free speech and censorship yeah one of the sources there is dictionary.com where did cancel culture come from <laughs> right. and the other one is something i've never heard of but it's a usa today okay so first of all I'm, point, just making, I'm making some fun here there is a point there of course right negative connotations but i don't remember being mean about wikipedia i was probably just being mean you don't remember it. when i did the definition one day and i used wikipedia and and i gave you a hard time oh you gave me a hard doesn't time doesn't sound like me <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but anyway that's fair okay okay anyway (laughs) it's okay i actually think we should be able to use wikipedia because wikipedia is a good source of why not i don't think there's any it's i bet you joe rogan uses wikipedia (laughs) well good for him no as long as you're looking at the sources actually wikipedia is a very good place to start when you're looking something up because you look at the sources that they have as well it's the yeah yeah sorry my point being (laughs) you're speaking about it in terms of how the right uses the word okay i kind of don't want to be an apologist for people left wing or right wing okay using it in reaction right okay yeah, so let's okay. both of us kind of let's look at it let's as a forget thing. what people have used it as and just look at not it not forget we should talk about that but just let's forget it amnesia <laughs> no we should definitely know that there's a context of how people use the term but i think some people are saying because it's being used this way mm. we should then act like it doesn't exist right okay that's very reactionary yeah so for example there's a CNN article, or at least it's on CNN, and it says it's time to cancel this talk of cancel culture. Oh, and okay. this is the first paragraph. I'm just going to read this. Yeah, read it. What exactly is cancel culture? Is it someone getting fired for harassment or problematic views? No, that's a workplace doing its job. Is it a popular figure losing fans or affiliations because of their past actions? No, that's the power of public opinion. Is it a company choosing not to publish a book or a group of people boycotting a brand? No. That's just the free market at work. Cancel culture, as it's understood today, isn't real. Not only do people and things allegedly canceled by this imaginary movement often prevail in the end, mm-hmm. the whole concept is a smokescreen to distract from actual systemic forces of suppression. And it's saying people are almost never actually canceled. So do you see what I mean? This is out there. Yeah, but that's saying, okay. It- then their idea of cancel is like very extreme. It's not black and white like that. It's not just like you're canceled. So you have to live in a hole in the middle of nowhere with nothing. It's an analysis by somebody named AJ Willingham on CNN, I should mention. That's not necessarily CNN. (laughs) My issue with reading when I read this here is it's so binary and black and white. Either they're, it's like either- There's a lack of nuance as Josh likes to say. It's a lack of nuance. Yeah. It's not like we're talking about somebody like they're either dead or not dead. (laughs) 
<laughs> it's not <laughs> they're canceled or they're not some canceled. people come back after a few minutes but yeah i mean it's in the name cancel culture mm. it's a kind of this call to like again even though they say cancel or call out culture i think those two are different oh calling out people is the start of it right cancel culture is the consequences it's when they lose something right yeah okay the actual consequence and so people have said like for example i i've mentioned my favorite comedian louis ck mm -hmm. right he was um he had jerked off in front of a bunch of women yeah <laughs> And... I mean, yeah, I actually have, I probably have very, I don't know if it's very, but like, I have fairly against the norm beliefs on this. I don't know if it's against the norm. I shouldn't say that. I might too. Well, not again. I don't think it was that bad. I think he asked them and like, yeah, I understand they were in a bad position and he shouldn't do that as like someone that they looked up to. Okay. So he, the story is essentially that he asked some other comedians if he could jerk off in front of them, which yeah. like based on what he said in his comedy, he's kind of a fucked up dude. <laughs> so, <laughs> it sense. so it's not like a huge surprise. Maybe people weren't taking him seriously when he said he's a disgusting man. Yeah. And maybe they should have. It's his thing. He says, yeah, it's like something he likes. It's true. Whatever. He shouldn't have done that because you in a position of power or uh, being looked at as kind of a mentor by these people, because the argument, and I agree with it, like you can't really give consent in when there is a power imbalance like that. So that's fair. Again, he did ask, and I think that we should have some ability to say like, eh, I'm not really into that. Mm -hmm. That's okay. You can say that. You're allowed to say that. I understand it's hard. You might worry about your career, but like- It's one thing to say when some people feels really frozen or they're pressured, but know. this really did seem like a case like they could have just walked away. It does. And <laughs> like, I don't want to judge- It's the type of crime where he's not touching anybody. He's just doing something to himself. Yeah. So I'm not saying that what I'm he not did saying it's okay. wrong. I, I'm saying it's shitty, but okay, he apologized. <laughs> he apologized. Yeah, we're both saying- we just both want to be the okay. first, I'll just say it. Okay, not only that, though. He genuinely feels bad, I think. Okay, so I actually will go the other direction for a second to say. Okay, go the other direction. I did read there might have been one or two of these that wasn't that clean cut. Okay. One of them he asked, but maybe didn't wait for an answer. And there's also the time he, like, jerked off on the phone with somebody, which, again, these are not. No. I, I mean, he it's <laughs> super gross. And he should be, he 100% should have been called out for it. And all of all this out. stuff. I okay. I agree. Okay. I agree that he, yeah, I know you're so excited that I did that. That's showing the difference between call out and call. Well, he is my favorite comedian. So I want him to not be, <laughs> you know, I want him not to be as bad. Right. So maybe I'm biased. I don't want to put, I don't want to make it light though. Like he, yeah. I don't want to make light of what he did. Cause it's shitty. It's a fucked up thing. That yeah. I think there's a difference between Bill Cosby who like raped. Oh my God. Or, drugs them, or Harvey Weinstein. You know, Ugh. and there's different levels and nuance, yeah. you know, to so these those things are two pe people who deserve to be stuck in a hole. Sorry, I'm okay. interrupting you. Yeah. So Louis C.K., though, he's just had a new comedy special come out, right? Mm -hmm. I watched it. I thought it was great. Oh, I loved really? it. Yeah. Wait, on Netflix? No. Where is it? On his website. Oh. So actually, you're <laughs> we're getting to part of what I'm about to Why say. Why not on Netflix, Josh? <laughs> So here's the thing. There's been people saying, how could you say that Louis was canceled? Because, you know, supposedly he was canceled, right? How could you say he, he was canceled? literally canceled? He, Didn't he have a show in the works and like another special that was supposed to come out before? He had a movie. A movie that was it. That got literally canceled. Yeah. That he shot and never really saw the light of day. He had a show called Horace and Pete. I don't know what happened with that. He had a show, Louis, that got canceled. Oh, yeah, I watched it. He was also on Netflix and all this stuff. His He's now not doing Netflix specials gone. anymore. He lost... Like gajillions of dollars. And people would protest outside of where he was. He was just going like to do comedy yeah. and people would protest outside. Like you can't even do that. Just, yeah. Okay. Again, if people don't want to do this stuff, I think that's fine. Like you want to say fuck that guy, fine. You know, you it's up to you what bothers you. I can't tell you, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and I think there's lots there to be bothered by. I think it affects his comedy moving forward, in my opinion, because mm -hmm. some of the stuff he jokes about has kind of a different ring to it now. It's like, mm, right? It's not such a joke, is it? You're actually just like, it's a disgusting <laughs> exactly. man. Yeah. Some of these yeah. things. I've heard people say, he clearly wasn't canceled. Look, he just came out with a new special. He clearly has fans packing the theater still for him. He's making money off of these specials. Clearly, he wasn't canceled. Cancel culture doesn't exist. And oh, it makes me want to like go crazy. That's not true. That's not correct. Yeah. He, cancel culture. The culture is still there. No. Did he just suffer consequences because of the free market? No. People called for him to be canceled in this cancel culture that we have going on. It's a thing now. We're saying to hold people accountable. Yes. 
but there's different ways to hold people accountable. Did we say we want Louis to issue an apology and learn from his ways and next comedy special on Netflix, he should, you know, it's up to, obviously it's up to Netflix, whether they, mm -hmm. but there's like heavy pressure all around, I would say. And that's the culture of it. That's why it's called cancel culture, right? Oh my there's God. A, <laughs> so cancel culture so many times in the last like one minute. It should be the name of this. Episode. Oh, we'll consider it. <laughs> anyway, cancel culture. Did I mention cancel culture? Oh. So this thing saying, does cancel culture exist? And it's saying no, because people are still going on and even seeming to win in some ways. Mm. That doesn't mean that it's like, no, it's not attempted murder because the guy survived or something. Right. I mean, a cancel culture might as well be called attempted canceling. Yeah, no, that's a good. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, because I think that's taking it to an extreme to say that if cancel culture were real, then people like Louis C.K. or anyone else would be completely destitute without any kind of platform of any kind in the world where everyone has a platform. I mean, you and I have a platform based on nothing. Like, it's not a difficult thing to get a platform. And he did get canceled, I think, in some pretty extreme ways that we've already mentioned. Yeah. And I mean, he was subject to the court of public opinion, a public shaming. Like, that's all part of the, the culture, the calling out and the, <laughs> and the culture. <laughs> You don't want to say it now. Canceling, it's, if you want. <laughs> it's kind of part of the process. What's the French word for cancel? <laughs> if we can't use this word too many times. Cancel. Cancel. No. <laughs> Let me look it up. Annulé. So it's a cancel. Annulé. Cool. I'm not using that word moving forward. <laughs> so it'd be like I Like to annul. It means yeah. it's an, in the English exactly, word is annul. Like to cancel. Yeah. yeah. Oh, here. Cancel culture. Wait, wait, wait. I found a like a cancel culture in French. Culture de banishment. Like banishment. Culture de boycottage. Boycott. Culture de l'effacement. Whatever that one is. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, boycotting is in there too. That's an interesting one. I didn't even think of yeah. cancel culture is often boycotting. People stop listening. Why is it all about boycotting? Why isn't there any girl cutting? <laughs> <laughs> that was fun but it was funny. i've never heard yeah why why what's the etymology of boycott josh this is becoming a word. <laughs> no yeah why why is it called that i don't know i, I wanted know. to challenge your woke joke at the beginning i you won you won man i don't know about that the woke joke was pretty good woke joke it even rhymes girl caught <laughs> Sure, somebody used There's that a term. word called girl cut. <laughs> <laughs> it's informal to boycott. I'm that sure. It's for girl cut. I'm sure week. it's really informal. Oh my God. Anyway. Anyway. Kaya. Jesus, Josh, stay on topic. What do you say we cancel? What do you say we annul the first part of, let's make this a first part. Okay. You you have more to say? We kind of knew this was going to, you know, be a long, long episode. Yeah. So why don't we stop here for now and pick it up uh, next episode? Yeah. So we don't bore you guys to, to. No, what are you talking about? This is you so to, exciting that you want to be. To cancel. We know you want to be back for part two. I don't, if you don't, then you're canceling us. Oh, they could cancel us. I wouldn't care. Yeah, you would. I wouldn't mind being canceled. You Stay wouldn't mind for being next canceled? episode <laughs> where Josh shares his fears of being canceled. What if just one of us showed up for next episode? One of us got canceled. <laughs> was... It's just me here talking now. Hey, everybody. Yeah. Um, I got canceled. <laughs> I canceled. I feel her. like of the two of us, I say more ridiculous things. Like if someone should oh. be canceled. <laughs> No, I, it's funny. You ask me, okay, I'll answer it next episode. You asked me okay. if I have a fear of being canceled, but like who has said more cancel worthy things? I don't know. Definitely <laughs> me. What do you, I think me. I don't know. Now I'm just hoping that I'm crazier than All right. To be continued. Okay. To be continued. This has been another episode of Adulthood Friends. Thank you for listening. And if you enjoyed this, please follow us on Facebook, on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you like to listen. Uh, we're everywhere. We haven't been deplatformed yet. So stay tuned for now. <laughs> anywhere that's about it for today thanks i already said that part did Josh you say thanks for listening dad. did you thank everyone i did i thanked everyone jesus Christ. you sure Josh, was, yeah you're such an asshole well we can always thank them again jeez i hate you so much no i don't want to <laughs> thank anybody ever again <laughs> thanks for staying awake josh uh... like a percentage awake yeah you're a very high functioning sleepy person when i'm sleepy i'm there's no way i could do this while sleeping it's, i am a little sleepy but not like you are right now i think there's a point at which you just become delirious and i don't know oh yeah that's fun yeah yeah i hit delirious a couple of times oh, okay